TV. My name is Pamela and we have a huge show in line for you this month. We go backstage with Big Mick and Paul Owen at the Metallica concert in Melbourne. And Gary Ashmore from Intravent shows us how he juggles all the logistics for the big screens during the Spring Carnival. But first, NTT TV were fortunate enough to catch up with Big Mick who does front of house for Metallica. And he took us on a whirlwind tour behind the scenes at their Melbourne concert. Hey and welcome to NTEC TV. Today we're here in Melbourne at the Rod Laver Arena with Big Mick with the Metallica show. We've got a really exciting segment for you to watch today. And uh, thank you so much for joining us You're today, welcome. Big Mick. Uh, and I think that uh, prompts us to go and do a little walk around our whirlwind tour of the audio system. Let's do it. Okay, let's go. Yes, yeah, so here we are, the playing area. This is where the magic begins. And the interface to the audio system starts right here. We have 10 vocal mics. 18 drum mics, 11 guitar channels, two bass lines. And they all plug into this, the Midas XL8 mic splitter. And it in turn feeds all of this. Our Tascam 48 track hard drive recorder. And this is our last line of defense for the internet recordings. It also plugs into this monitor world. I'd like to introduce Bob Cowan, monitor engineer, and Adam, his able assistant. And this is his setup. Quite nice, as you can see. XL4, complete with salad bar. We have the new Sennheiser uh, ear system, which is kind of nice. How many wedges do you have, Bob? 20. 20 MJF212 Mayo wedges all over the stage and an in-ear system. Via four Cat 5s and two I.O. boxes, the system also plugs into this. And here we are with our Pro Tools recording setup with Mike Gillis, our Pro Tools engineer, who records all the shows um, and mixes them for the internet releases. We also he also records the band's warm-ups, which they do prior to the show. Um, this is uh, Mike's nice little SSL console, which I said before was fed from four Cat fives and two I/O boxes from the Midas system. We're now going to find out what hangs onto the two optical cables as opposed to the four Cat 5s that we run to here. Okay, here we are at the end of the optical cables plugged into my world finally, my XL8. And in turn, my Midas XL8 feeds my 9696 recorder, which is a high definition 24 bit 96K recorder, uh, which we use for doing high def video and stuff. So, um, Sometimes it's Mikey Pro Tools recording uh, this one, or uh, if all fails, you saw the Tascam earlier, we'll go to that. There is always a recording to go on the internet. I also feed signal to the drive rack, our Galileo drive rack, 46 zones to run our system, which in turn goes up a fiber optic up there and goes into that. Quite nice really, isn't it? Jans have been designing, building and operating lighting equipment since we made our first dimmer in 1970. Since then, our products have become a standard feature of lighting rigs the world over. But we don't just offer our own lighting equipment, we've also identified the very best products available from other manufacturers around the world. Whether you're after a control console or a moving light, a dimming solution or a power distribution system, an architectural package or a conventional fixture, Jans has the product to suit your application. Jans. No one knows lighting like we do. The Spring Carnival is a massive event for the VRC with over 400,000 people attending over the period. To make sure all the punters can see the action from every angle, large screens have been placed around Flemington Racecourse. Gary Ashmore from Intravent explains how he achieved this. November is the heart of the Spring Racing Carnival, along with Derby Day, the Melbourne Cup, Stakes Day, and of course, my favourite day, Oaks Day. And if you have a look around, all the women are beautifully dressed in their designer garments, wearing party feet, and of course, Hollywood tape to keep them up. We spoke with Gary Ashmore, who's responsible for setting up all these big screens so that the punters can watch the horses pass the winning post. Hi Gary, and thank you so much for joining us on Antec TV. Just wondering how many monitors and large screens do you have here at Flemington? 
outdoor screens at Flemington, uh, there's 17 in total, um, and they're stretched over to 350 acres of the site. And uh, there's three here in the nursery right behind me, and then another 14 areas around the uh, around the entire site. Were the screens already installed, or did you have to install them? No, there's, um, these screens only uh, provide temporary services during the Cup Carnival. Uh, the installation period is over a week, and uh, the pack down period to get these screens out, uh, they're all out in a matter of three days. Our scope of work with the VRC is to provide audio support for all the temporary super screens uh, around the site and also manage uh, the emergency messaging system to those screens and uh, also provide and set up the emergency control centre. So Gary, obviously you have a very important position here at Flemington and a lot of responsibility. Uh, do you actually get a little bit anxious about things possibly going wrong? Well, there's some backup contingencies in terms of signal distribution and also in terms of audio, uh, audio signals. Um, but really you're at the elements in this type of event, so you've just got to uh, make sure all your preparations and your installation is done correctly and is waterproof. The signal distribution to these areas is some, some is done by fibre optic, some is done by copper. Uh, as you can appreciate, as this particular uh, event has grown over the years, there's new technologies available when they need to put these signal distribution systems in. Back in control, there is a um, 16 by 16 metric switcher. Uh, which is used to uh, isolate signals to each screen. Uh, and of course there's VDAs and things like Gatton's and so on that are applied to each signal. We'll be planning for the 2011 event uh, probably uh, next week, maybe the week after, so it's a 12 month, 12 month project. But certainly coming up to Derby Day, which is uh, for the club the first day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival, uh, there are a few nerves and uh, just to make sure everything's going to go right for the first day. World class manufacturers depend upon national audio systems. Australia's number one distributor of pro and commercial audio. You can achieve great things with the right products, people and professionals. National Audio Systems. Here's Julius Grafton with Education Corner. Welcome to this month's education report and guess what, we're going to hang a light. Visual and mechanical inspection is critical, especially checking the cable and the test tag. Make sure you test the light with an RCD lead, a safety lead, to ensure that the light is safe. Make sure the light is the right way up before you apply power to it. Lights are inherently dangerous because they draw a lot of current and they operate hot. Put those together with movement and you've got the potential for electrocution. It happens more often than you think. Now we open up the optical pathway, opening the barn doors or the shutters if it's a profile spot and point the light in the general direction that it's going to end up. Make sure each light can pan and tilt without striking the one next door. Now we carefully tape the lead up so that it avoids the light itself, the casing of the light, and so it still allows the light to pan and to tilt. When you're ready to handle and focus lights, you must be wearing gloves. Whenever power is applied, anywhere on the bar, you'll be wearing gloves. That's all for this month. NTEC InTech returns to the Sydney Convention and Exhibition Centre, Darling Harbour in July 2011. For the first time ever, NTEC will co-locate with SEMTI, providing one major trade event for the whole industry. See hundreds of exhibitors representing thousands of brands. Talk tech with the experts and see live how the latest equipment can work for you. The latest educational seminars, workshops and events will run alongside NTEC. Check out our website for the latest news on this world-class event on ntechintech.com. See you there. Now, it's time for... Things that make you go... Mm. The first lectern was invented by religious groups over a thousand years ago and has had many changes in that time. The word lectern comes from the Latin word lectus which means to read. The lectern consists of a platform for reading material to be placed on and a stand for a speaker to stand behind. This enables the speaker to be eye level with the audience and also stops the speaker from crouching over. Early lecterns were very ornate and heavy and were mostly constructed in churches and places of worship. Nowadays a lectern can be easily moved and comes with creature comforts such as interactive buttons to control microphone level, PowerPoint presentation buttons, 
on-off buttons for projectors, and even more buttons, and much more. The world's most powerful people and most famous speeches have all come from behind a lectern. So next time you're setting up or standing behind a lectern, remember you are standing behind a tried and tested piece of audio-visual engineering, and that's why it makes our list of things that make you go, hmm. Welcome back. We know you love part one of Big Mick's interview, so here's part two with Big Mick and Paul Owen. Now these guys have been working together for what, over 20 years now? It's more than, more than, yes. more than. Yes. We actually were in the uh, apprentice shop together when we were 16, 16 years, years old. old. You're kidding. Yeah. And we didn't work that out until about 10 years later when we was on a Metallica tour. Yeah, well, there you go. bizarre as it is. So about 34 years. So Paul, I just wanted to ask you about this rig up here. Can you explain, you know, how long does something like that to take, take to put together and it's obviously a big job. Well there's a design concept at the beginning according to what the production is when it first gets put together and then it's the engineer's input, ask the sound company can you achieve this and then we have to do things related to distribution of sound and also down to weight as well which is a big governing factor with a system this big because you're looking at something that's getting into you know 80 tons of equipment a lot of arenas don't hang that. A big difference in arenas here because you see it's got an open roof and there's now scoreboard. In the US and a lot of the arenas now they've gone to these huge scoreboards which are very weight orientated so therefore it dictates how big a show you can hang around that. So this show was all when we designed this show we had to take the weight into cons in serious consideration. So one thing we did on this, because it's a Milo, it's a Maya system and all the amplifiers are built in, it means no amplifiers on the ground for people who don't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so we just run a um, power cable feeder up there and fiber optic. If we'd have gone to the old technology of having amplifiers on the ground and speakers up there, we would have probably... Well, we've, a, done a, it. we've actually done it. We've, we've done that. We would probably have an, an additional, yeah. I should say, four to eight tons of cable running up there. So when you take that load off, that broadens it for other people to expand on their side of the production, such as lighting and flying cars. There's only a given amount of weight that yeah. can be hung there. And if we grab it all with speaker system, yeah. then of course the, the show would be kind of look a bit dark, I think. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. And also with this, uh, that, you know, Mick really wanted to, uh, with, with, we've, uh, with Metallica and over the years, we've done it in the round quite a few times now. And um, we've challenged with different challenges with different productions, and Mick's always pushed the envelope to changing things around. And we tried a different base concept with this to put all the subs in the air and not the ground, which is um, it's tough. It's tough be because but it's, it's a very low stage. Is the problem as you saw it earlier when we were down there? Mm -hmm. The stage is only three foot, so you could only ever get one base bin high or one sub base bin high. So you're never going to couple a load of them together to give you more of a summation. So we decided that to go, everything in the air is what's got to be done. You have to battle because you know there's only a certain amount of real estate up there in the air. And we start putting speakers where the lighting guys want to put lights. And you get into this to and fro. So, you know, well, we've got 26 to months to refine it. So. 26 months of refining, so you should, it, it should be at its best tonight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Put yourself on the spot there. Well, I think, I think on that note, guys, thank you so much for joining welcome, us on Tech TV. We really appreciate your time and good luck with the show. Thank you very much. And all the best in wrapping it up and enjoy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers. They were looking for us to analyse the building and study the building and to come back with an approach that was more of an artistic um, idea than just an illumination. So um, they wanted something that was obviously visible and would represent the building to a, a greater a macro scale and a viewpoint. Um, but they trusted us. They trusted us to come back with some ideas that they would like. Well, that's it for this episode of NTech TV. In our next episode, we speak to Sasha Appel and John Hancock from Connected Living about home automation. And as usual, we also have a few surprises as well. Until then, bye for now.